or to use the COCA pulse test, whereby the pulse is taken in a, um, every morning at a, a specific time and then is retaken after eating a f When we look at allergy, we need to, number one, uh, take a very, very thorough history, listen to the patient, f uh, find out exactly what their symptoms are, and that can be a myriad of symptoms, not only limited, again, to classic allergy symptoms like nasal congestion or wheezing or cough or skin rash, but a broader sense of allergy can look at symptoms that would include a anything from uh, brain symptoms such as cognitive dysfunction, you can't think clearly, or brain fog, fatigue, muscle or joint aches, all kinds of gastrointestinal problems ranging even from constipation, diarrhea, to bloating or abdominal pains, um, nerve problems like numbness or tingling, or what have you. So there's a really long list um, of symptoms that can be associated with allergy. And we need to consider these when, I, when we see patients, when I see a patient, that uh, comes to me with a long list of complaints have to try to think of ways to tie these together and allergy is one of the ways we can tie this together. If you're and you eat, touch, or smell something so that there is a change, you have to say is it due to something inside, outside, a food, or a chemical. And if you want to document or try to prove exactly what's causing the problem or the area, you check your pulse, you check your breathing, you check your writing or your drawing, you check how you look, and you check how you feel. If you do that, you are going to find answers that have been missed for years. You may find out why you need blood pressure pills. And if you can eliminate the cause, your blood pressure may come down without medication. You may find out why you have an irregular heartbeat, why your muscles cramp and go into spasm, why your child wets the bed, why you have a hoarse voice or can't speak clearly, why you have a hearing problem, why you have a, an activity or a mood problem, why you cry for no reason at all, why you have chronic headaches or depression. I don't want to give the idea that every illness that ever plagued mankind is due to an environmental factor, but I'm saying it's missed repeatedly because we weren't taught about it in medical school. We now say that there is another type of allergic reaction to foods that affects most people is much more common called delayed onset. And what it means is, as, as I failed to mention in the immediate reaction, is that when you eat a food that you have an immediate allergy to, you have symptoms very quickly, usually within an hour or two or less, sometimes seconds. The delayed onset group says that the symptoms appear anywhere from two to 72 hours after you consume the food. And it's very interesting that things like epilepsy and migraine headaches and asthma frequently have allergic symptoms that appear the next day after you eat the foods. Uh, not uncommon 48 hours after you consume the foods. And this is in very well controlled uh, scientific studies. Uh, secondly, uh, it's not one or two foods, it's anywhere from three foods to five foods to 10 foods. In the Egger study on epilepsy, for example, he found one kid that could provoke an epileptic seizure to any one of 10 different foods in his diet. Third, uh, you can't pick it up with a skin test. You need to use a, another testing procedure that I'm familiar with, that I've used for 15 years, called the IgG, not IgE, but IgG ELISA test that is an excellent screening test to pick up delayed onset food allergy. Interestingly enough, uh, not only is it multiple foods and the symptoms appear two hours to 72 hours later, but as you could predict, rarely is it self-diagnosed. And these are the conditions that doctors see frequently, but because they don't view allergy properly, they misdiagnose. Those are the kind of allergies that are important to try to locate. The only way you can do that is by an elimination diet. And what one needs to do is eliminate a suspicious food, most, one of the most common ones, are wheat, for five days and then reintroduce it into the diet with a isolated uh, wheat source early in the morning all by itself and then a second exposure later on in the afternoon and then wait within a 24 to 48 hour period to see if there is an allergic response. Once you eliminate the food from your diet for about five days, you eliminate the antigens and antibodies so it becomes more obvious to you whether or not you're reacting to it. The 
many people will have more than one allergic condition. So if you add these all together, they sound rather astounding, but there are actually people who have three or four different conditions simultaneously. Probably one of the most common ones would be migraine headaches. It's been estimated that it does affect about 30 million Americans, of uh, which approximately 5 to 6 million have migraine headaches uh, at least once a month, sometimes 250 times a year. Uh, my experience in the scientific literature says that the majority of those people have a food allergy chemical sensitivity problem. Another real common condition is irritable bowel syndrome that we see uh, extremely frequently. In fact, it's the single most common reason why people go to see a gastrointestinal specialist. Approximately 30 to 40 million Americans, most of them women, suffer from this condition. It's associated with abdominal pain or cramping diarrhea alternating with constipation, and a number of other symptoms. As you get more and more of a saturation of this waste material around the cells, what happens is the body goes into seeing it as a poison and it creates an allergic response. The histamine becomes stronger and stronger and the body does everything it can to throw it off. So you might get hives, you might get uh, boils, you might get discharges from the nose, the watery eyes, the tickling in the throat, all this anxiety feelings, these are all part of allergic responses. Depending on what the shock organ is, whether it's the lungs, someone will have asthma. If it's the skin, someone will get eczema or hives or swelling. If it's the gastrointestinal tract, someone will get diarrhea or bloating. Will depend on the kind of reaction someone has. Uh, a condition that neurologists call chronic neurological conditions of unknown cause. These are things like uh, loss of feeling and abnormal sensations in the arms and legs called uh, peripheral neuropathy and uh, balance problems uh, called ataxia. Uh, we're now suspecting that a, 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 a gluten sensitivity, uh, an allergy or sensitivity to gluten found in wheat, rye, barley, and oats may play a real important role and I, I should also mention autism. Uh, autism, there's now published literature su suggesting that autistic kids, many of those kids, their condition is at least aggravated, if not fundamentally caused by exposure to common food allergens, such as dairy products and wheat products. If the inflammatory process continues, uh, chronic conditions develop, such as sinusitis or arthritis, um, and if these conditions and allergies are not taken care of, then later degenerative diseases can take place, which, which are not reversible. Often when you have childhood allergies, these tend to go away. The body finds other ways of adapting to these subtle kinds of reactions. When we're children, we're more sensitive, and these hyper reactions of the immune system and the way we release histamine and other chemicals in the body that causes the common symptoms of allergies, such as uh, swelling, redness, uh, itchiness, and uh, watery or mucus discharge. These can pass, but we may still manifest them later in terms of other uh, imbalance and as we uh, experience more stress in our life or we're exposed to more chemicals or we develop other habits such as the, the regular intake of sugar uh, or we start smoking cigarettes or we use alcohol regularly or caffeine these tend to weaken the body's immune system and then we become more sensitive again or our bodies tends to become more reactive we start to stress uh, our body stress our adrenal glands which help us deal with, with uh, everyday life and stress and, and we start to have again allergic reactions and these may manifest on the skin in the way our brain functions and in our, our moods and energy as well as uh, the common sinus allergies. Our diet has, has changed an awful lot in the last 50 years where we've uh, restricted the number of foods we're, we're eating, we've overprocessed our foods, we've chemicalized our foods. Uh, uh, in fact, we're malnourished, and I think that plays a real strong uh, role in the uh, al epidemic of allergy. Usually it has to do with the overload of the detox pathways. Nutritional deficiencies are the thing that allow the body to become hypersensitive.